Hello, dear fans, friends, subscribers. It has been, I know it is a pre pretty late here today. Uh, as far as the cricket happening show is concerned, unfortunately, uh, there was some conking uh, of the system here. But, uh, well, I'm back here and let me not waste any time. So probably today, it's not going to be a whole drawn report as I normally give. Uh, it is going to be probably a synopsis. But nevertheless, let's talk about the game between uh, South Africa. Probably I'm going to have a look at what happened in the first day's play in the in the uh, third test match which started today at the new wonder stadium in johannesburg stumps on day one south africa uh, who actually won the toss now i like to talk about this toss yesterday i told you uh, that the pitch was uh, looking there was a lot of and it would be interesting to see uh, which uh, it would be interesting to see uh, which is the team which is actually winning the toss and actually batting first because the the team which bats last on this wicket uh, would probably have a struggle because the uh, I'm sure the cracks would really open up. Uh, and um, if you if you look at the selection, let's have a look at the selection now for South Africa. Uh, they had um, a lot of problems. In fact, Quinton de Kock, the wicketkeeper batsman who was to play, unfortunately uh, was ruled out of the match. And then it it was Dean Villas who had to be rushed to the uh, ground. So basically, Dean Villas came in. And uh, and I'm I'm really surprised. Let me tell you, uh, because uh, considering that this pitch is going to turn, uh, I'm really really surprised uh, that uh, South Africa don't have any frontline spinner. In fact, they also dropped J.P. Dumini today uh, from the lineup. Uh, they decided to blood the new guy uh, Willowen. Uh, that was expected. G.C. Willowen of South Africa who was making his test debut today. And uh, I was really telling, uh, to, to, to really tell the truth here, uh, well, I thought I was extremely surprised uh, that uh, I didn't see a frontline spinner, not a single frontline spinner in South African ranks. Uh, and looking at the way things have gone, South Africa are the ones who won the toss. And despite the, uh, the, the temperature, in the sense uh, it, was, uh, it was very cloudy, uh, the pitch was green, it was very cloudy, Despite that, A.P. De Villiers, the South African, new South African captain, uh, actually decided that his ward would bat first. So that, is, that according to me, uh, was the right decision because, as I said, uh, they would be, the opposition team would be caught on the last day because I'm sure these cracks are going to really open up. Uh, but, uh, but what happened uh, later, I mean, uh, after A.P. De Villiers actually won the toss, he decided to bat first. And uh, looking at this South African team, as I said, there's no frontline spinner. And well, I, I'm sure um, uh, the decision which is taken, probably uh, many people uh, uh, might have been wondering as to why on cloudy conditions did A.B. De Villiers uh, really take to banning first. Probably he's definitely influenced by the fact he knows. But I'm only wondering as to why there is no frontline spinner in the South African ranks. Because if you look at the team there, um, uh, I mean, the spinner, if you call it, well, probably Duplessis has to bounce up, bowl some spin. Uh, and other than that, it's been, uh, they have really, um, they really start, sort of stopped it with pace bowlers. I can understand that. But uh, I'm a bit surprised that uh, South Africa probably will be ruining the fact that they not only do, do not have a frontline spinner, also they have decided to risk a big time, I would say, because they, have, they, they also decided to drop J.P. Dumini. Now, to me, um, I, I, I mean, we know that England are going to bat last on this particular, in this test. Uh, I think um, South Africa well knew the fact uh, that um, they did this. Or probably, uh, one, one probably feels that probably A.B. de Villiers might have to bowl or probably Hashim Amla, Stai Van Zyl. Dean Elgar is the only spinner, but I wouldn't consider him as frontline spinner. So I'm a bit surprised here uh, that they decided to go without a frontline spinner in their ranks. Well, uh, and as far as England are concerned, well, um, I, I mean, I thought uh, England did well here. Uh, the South African innings. So let's talk about the South African innings. South Africa started off winning the toss to bat. Uh, James Addison today, uh, who definitely was looking listless today. He was not really, uh, he, he didn't have any penetration. But Stuart Broad was bowling well. But Stephen Finn was the best bowler. He was really uh, making the ball talk, I would say. And Dean Elgin Stein Van Zyl opened the innings. Uh, it was a decent partnership which happened uh, between Dean Elgar and Stein Van Zyl. The score moved on to 44, uh, and, but the breakthrough uh, was provided. Now, uh, I mean, Anderson, Broad and Finn couldn't make any inroads. Uh, and then finally, 
it was a very very innocuous delivery coming in from stokes uh, absolutely a ball i would say a real long hop that stein van zyl um, uh, succumbed to as he tried to actually flick the delivery and it went into the hands of barry stokes behind the wicket so uh, so a very very innocuous delivery taking the wicket of stein van zyl so he was gone for 21 with four boundaries hashim amla walked in to join dean elgar dean elgar well he was doing a good job at the crease uh, leaving the ball swell uh, nudging well blocking well he was doing quite well and we all know that dean elgar has already shown uh, that he's a very very gutsy cricketer too and uh, he started um, uh, playing in the right manner hashim mamla was uh, uh, probably after uh, the, the the partnership uh, sorry the captaincy uh, burden has gone uh, we saw hashim mamla was really leaning into the strokes which was good to see uh, there was some serenity about hashim mamla and that was good to see so but this partnership um, really uh, took the game along i would say uh, and um, actually they they passed lunch with just one wicket uh, falling uh, the score went on from 44 to 117 so essentially they added uh, 73 runs which was very good uh, it was a nice uh, phase of play uh, but also both the players were seeing to it that they were guarding the wicket but at the same time uh, whenever any strokes uh, uh, were to be played uh, it was uh, played with uh, absolute uh, i would say absolute ease and while this was going on um, uh, moin ali uh, actually disturbed this partnership uh, when he picked up the wicket of dean elgar uh, who, who did a good job i thought after making 46 with five boundaries after that uh, we saw amla as i said amla was looking good abe de villiers came in and uh, he started uh, thumping the ball uh, for boundaries and he also hit a six but then stokes was the one uh, who was the fastest bowler today in this england camp uh, he was the one who picked up the wicket of abe de villiers for 36 of 40 balls four fours and one six uh, after that we saw uh, hashim amla uh, being taken and now this is the ball uh, which uh, which was a big wicket uh, and Stephen Finn has to be credited for this because this is a ball which was a full length ball which was pitched on the off stump uh, and it actually um, it was pitched on, on, on and around the off stump I'd say and the ball um, uh, swerved away uh, and it beat Hashim Amla's defense uh, and uh, Hashim Amla was not able to present the broad face of the bat to it uh, and it was Barry Stowe behind the sticks uh, doing the rest. But what a delivery from Stephen Finn. Pitching on the off stump and uh, swerving away from Hashim Amla. Hashim Amla uh, could do nothing. A beauty of a delivery being delivered by Finn to see the back of Amla. He was gone for 40 with 7 boundaries which made it 127 for 3. When De Villiers departed it was 161 for 4. Uh, Duplessis uh, played a, uh, one would say, uh, probably played a rash stroke as he tried to flick a ball from Stephen Finn. Uh, he was gone for 16 with 2 boundaries. Uh, and then Timba Bauma uh, in a mix-up with the Dean Millers who was uh, rushed in place of Quinton, the injured Quinton de Kock today. Uh, they had a sort of a mid-pitch misunderstanding uh, and the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the ensuing um, uh, confusion, uh, Timba Bauma uh, was run out for 23 with three fours. Uh, and then uh, we saw uh, just before close of play, Dean Millers was also consumed uh, by Stuart Broad. For 26 uh, for four fours and at that time the score rate 225 for seven uh, there were still uh, 15 overs to go uh, and uh, the new ball was also due and probably one thought uh, we would probably see uh, either England bat again uh, or uh, sorry uh, probably we'll see the first innings of England but I thought uh, Morris and Rabada did a very good job in fact they are still there at the crease uh, and uh, they have really taken they have done a fine job I reckon uh, because they have weathered 10 overs of the new ball and that is not because uh, I would say uh, I mean they, they can't be called genuine tailenders but Morris definitely can bat you know uh, but uh, I thought um, Chris Morris and Rabada have done a, a great job there for South Africa they've added some valuable runs they've taken the score from 225 for 7 uh, to 267 so 42 run partnership uh, it is not about the uh, runs uh, basically what you see here is that they have weathered the new ball. Uh, they have they have played. The, it is nine overs also. Basically, eighty nine overs have been bowled for the day. And um, uh, South Africa, at close of play, uh, stood at two sixty seven for seven. As I thought, probably uh, it would be an early end to the first innings of uh, South Africa, but it was not to be. So I would say credit to Chris Morris, who was not out on twenty six with four boundaries, 
Kagishwarabha also played a good hand. He also offered some stubborn uh, resistance with not out on 20 with two fours and both will be actually resuming their innings tomorrow. But uh, definitely I thought um, uh, there South Africa definitely took it away from England. Uh, so England could not, even though they had their, uh, as I said today, Anderson was not hitting his trap. So that was, uh, that was something which was a bit, uh, one was a bit concerned about. But Broad and Finn were doing a good job, especially Finn uh, was uh, really, really uh, getting the ball to really move. Uh, but uh, 267 for 7 uh, and if you look at the South African uh, batting, well the problem happens to be that nobody was able to go on to a big score. Uh, they couldn't, they, they chiseled some partnerships but uh, none of them could, uh, if you look at the highest score goes Dean Elgar with 46 at the top of the order. But other than that, um, and nobody got 40 from Hashim Mahamla, but other than that nobody could really get on to a big innings and so that that is something uh, which would rank with South Africa that no one was able to play and especially considering uh, their bowling resources according to me are also weak as I said if at all uh, the pitch cracks uh, on the final day and when England at that time uh, they might well view the fact that they, they, they decided to go into this um, match with four pace bowlers instead of a spinner one could really understand why they did that because uh, they knew that this English batting lineup is pretty strong as I said uh, yesterday in my preview too. Uh, what is more important is uh, South Africa should have uh, the uh, the strength to actually bowl whether they have the uh, bowling resources to uh, bowl the English team out twice. Uh, now that is something one can be taken but to go without a genuine spinner according to me uh, is still according to me a big folly according to me but uh, only time will tell the story. Uh, I, I, I I'll, I'm, I'll be happy if I'm proved wrong, but uh, I have a sincere feeling uh, that uh, there is some, uh, I mean, there, there is a serious error uh, that has happened uh, as far as uh, not going for frontline spinner. So let's have a look at the uh, English uh, bowling here. Anderson, as I said, uh, was not looking at the Anderson that we know. 20 overs, 5 minutes, none for 46. Uh, broad, 17 overs, 4 minutes, none for 58. Stephen Finn, uh, pick my pick up my bowlers today. 18 overs, 4 minutes, 50 runs and 2 wickets. Moin Ali did a good job, 16 overs, 4 maidens, 1 for 50. Ben Stokes was the wicket taker, 18 overs, 1 maiden, 2 for 53. So South Africa, 267 for 7, going into the second day. And uh, it will be interesting uh, to see whether um, Kagi Sarabana and uh, Chris Morris could really, really prolong this innings. And probably uh, with Willow and the uh, test debutant coming in and Moni Mortkel coming in, uh, probably if they could actually push the score on to pass the 300 or 310 mark. Uh, that would be something of a psychological um, uh, thing for South Africa. But one has to wait and watch. Uh, but I'm sure this ball is uh, absolutely new. And I'm sure England uh, would make sure uh, that they won't allow Kagish Rabada and Chris Morris to prosper long. Uh, and, they, they, and they would also have the new factor in their favour in the morning. And the new ball will be fresh. So that will be uh, a pretty interesting situation uh, to see whether Kagish Sarabana and Chris Morris can continue in the same vein or um, are they been or are, are, are if at all they have been consumed by the English bowlers? So uh, England will be hoping that they can restrict them, and it would be uh, good for England to ask, actually restrict them to 300. As I said, this pitch uh, for me uh, definitely could be cracking on the fourth and fifth day, uh, and that is the time South Africa will feel that they don't have a spinner. Well, so I, um, so that is as far as um, the match between South Africa and uh, uh, South Africa and England are concerned. Now let us have a look at the other match which is going to happen, uh, probably hours away from uh, actually this particular match starting. So I'm going to go and see the fans from the Travers whether uh, this particular match between India and Australia today is going to be the uh, second uh, uh, one-day international uh, which is being played uh, between India and Australia. Australia are already uh, one up in the series as we all know. So the second one-day international is going to be pretty important. Uh, but there is a threat of rain. Let me tell you that, uh, dear fans and subscribers, uh, that is absolutely a threat of rain. The, the play has not yet started. Uh, but as far as the preview, there's nothing. I'm not going to go into uh, any greater details as far as the preview is concerned. Uh, but uh, generally, uh, one can definitely uh, have a look uh, as to see uh, what really uh, is in uh, prospect as far as uh, this particular uh, match is concerned. This is going to be played at Gabba and Brisbane. And uh, I'm told that uh, rain is going to probably prove a spoiled sport here. And we might have a truncated uh, uh, innings, uh, uh, or a truncated overs in this uh, particular match. 
but uh, one has to wait and watch. So uh, this is the second one day international, uh, which is coming up. Probably I would have done a preview, but as I said, I'm short of time today. A lot of time I've been lost actually uh, retrieving my system uh, because of what are the problems. Uh, the flash plate was crashing and then I had to reload. A lot of things had to happen. Uh, but India, well, uh, they would be hoping that uh, they can do a good turn. I don't think uh, India will probably hazard any changes here. I think they should be going with the same team, um, even though they lost it, but uh, they still did a good job. Australia, well, they are uh, totally confident, but uh, but I'm told that there could be, we could be seeing some changes. Uh, John Sassel, Joel Pass, Scott Bolland, and we could see uh, a change in the lineup, and that is because uh, David Warner uh, has gone for the birth of his second child, uh, and uh, his place uh, is going to be filled uh, by someone who... Uh, not a batsman, it is going to be a baller. They are probably going to strengthen the balling because they know that Josh, Scott Bowman and Joel Paris are rookies. Uh, they just played their first Monday International. So uh, they might probably, uh, there's a quite a, a strong possibility that John Hastings uh, might be the one who's come. And also, uh, another news that I have here from India, well, India could probably go for a change. One has to wait and watch. Ishan Sharma, for me, Ishan Sharma is a certainty. He should play. Uh, because he's one, he's also a very tall guy like Barinder Shran. So I would reckon uh, Ishan Sharma should be playing uh, in uh, in place of Bhuneshwar Kumar. Uh, or probably Umesh Yadav. But I would say uh, it would be better to have Umesh Yadav, Ishan Sharma and Barinder Shran. So they will have two tall bowlers uh, hunting on either side. Because Barinder Shran is also a tall guy. And you have Ishan Sharma also a tall guy. So that would be interesting. And that would be a, a sort of variety too because uh, left arm uh, left arm pace bowler and from the other side you will have a right arm pace bowler so that will be a, a sort of a, a real way uh, it would be very interesting to see uh, how the Australian uh, openers actually negotiate uh, but in the Shran and Nishan Sharma for me uh, that should be the change which should be happening uh, but as I said uh, one has to wait and watch uh, because Umesh Yadav I still feel he has some pace but Bhuvneshwar Kumar lacks pace he relies Basically, I'm saying, or probably, uh, or it could be like this, uh, because uh, we, uh, the Gamba Peters has said there has been a lot of rain falling, so definitely there will be some movement. So probably that might prompt Dhoni to actually uh, probably a plump for Bhuvaneshwar Kumar uh, instead of Omey Shadows. So, but as to, one has to wait and watch, but Ishan Sharma will definitely make a difference according to me. Uh, and as I said, high showers, uh, I mean high chance of showers uh, and rain have been forecast. Uh, as far as uh, this particular one day international is concerned, which is not good news, but one has to wait and watch. But it's a sunny morning, a high chances of uh, rain and showers developing in the evening. Well, uh, from here, uh, I will. there is also one more match which is going to start. Now, that is, as you know, Pakistan are touring uh, New Zealand, and they are going to be playing T20 matches. Uh, the first T20 match is going to be played, as I said. There is only one man. We know T20s are going to be the focus of uh, uh, till such time the T20 World Cup uh, is played, no doubt about it. But the the man who is going to be uh, in focus is none other than Mohammad Amir, because Mohammad Amir is big, making a return to international cricket after all the um, wrong things that happened in his uh, career. Uh, but uh, we all know what a wonderful player he is, uh, Mohammad Amir. He has already made a mark in the Bangladesh. Uh, um, I mean, we saw he did well in the BPL. And now he comes, as I said, all the eyes will be on only one person, according to me, in this uh, Pakistan versus New Zealand T20 match, which is coming up. Um, uh, I think Mohamed Amir would be the focus. As far as Pakistan are concerned, all the eyes will be on Mohamed Amir because he's balling. And I think, uh, especially if he can actually control uh, the ball, uh, that would be great because in uh, New Zealand conditions, you need to know to control the ball. Um, uh, because there'll be a lot of windy conditions, especially Eden Park in Auckland, where it is going to be played. It's a small ground. We know Sri Lanka went on hitting a lot of strokes, and uh, they succumbed to the New Zealand bowlers. And then New Zealand absolutely rammed them uh, with some, with a uh, with uh, with a record making coming in from uh, Colin Munro, Martin Guptill. Uh, Colin Munro is holding the fastest century, fastest half century of just 12 balls uh, when he did it in Sri Lanka. So, uh, but uh, we know Pakistan have a much better attack and uh, it could be an interesting uh, stage which is set. But T20 is definitely would be the focus. So, and as I said, this is Pakistan were playing, Pakistan New Zealand playing the first T20 today. 
and uh, I think it would be uh, one uh, one very very good contest. And especially considering that the New Zealand batting, uh, they are on the home turf, and they also their batting is looking strong, their bowling is coming well. Uh, I think it's going to be a very nice contest because definitely um, Pakistan will have more experience than Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka were a rebuilding side, but Pakistan have lots of experience. So. Uh, it would be, a, according to me, a very nice, juicy contest uh, developing. And uh, this will also help both the teams uh, look at the teams because uh, they know the T20 World Cup, they have to get the best combination out for the T20 World Cup. And I think we are uh, bracing ourselves for a wonderful match. But uh, the prime focus would be all the eyes, according to me, in this particular match will be on that uh, young boy, Mohamed Amir, uh, who is making his return to international cricket. Uh, after uh, um, after uh, quite a number of years. Uh, well, dear, and good luck to Mohamed Amir. Uh, and on this note, dear fans and subscribers, it's about time for me uh, to say goodbye to you all on this Cricket Happening show. Hope 